there, and welcome to this wonderful museum. I am Professor Clockington, here once again to educate you on the Wikipedia-based history from my own PhD of all these wonderful statues. which is entirely made of duffosilized dung. Delightful. On this glorious tour, we shall see three more fantastic monuments. Please join me as we go on our wonderful little adventure. And so, the first exhibit on our wonderful tour today is this beautiful statue from around 1550, China, ancient China, the Ming Dynasty. Now, the Ming Dynasty is a dynasty that only lasted around 150 years over the course of three emperors, and this was the first, otherwise known as Emperor Ming. This is not, however, the emperor. This was one of the emperor's most important servants. This fellow was referred to as the Royal Dong Checker. And what this fantastically dressed gentleman would do is he would carry around this beautiful length of stone in his hand, as if his life depended on it. Now, the Ming Dynasty focused very heavily on the size and length and girth of the Emperor's Dong to rule. Anybody whose dong was feasibly larger than the emperor's was considered a threat of which they must be destroyed. Therefore, this gentleman, as the official dong checker, went around to the villages of ancient China, collecting all of the men over the age of 18. He'd then show them some kind of pornography. We've spoken about Roman spank banks in the past, but we haven't recovered any Chinese spank banks recently, so I can't show you an example of that, to get these men nice and rigid, and then check the length of their selves against the emperor's length. If anybody was found to be longer than the emperor, this gentleman would have them taken to a field where he would have a horse eat them. Their knob, that is. Dog technical terminology we use, and then he'd have them executed. Therefore, he was a rather reviled figure around the empire, as anybody who even came to half the length of the emperor could find themselves at the mercy of this esteemed gentleman. And we know that this gentleman was considered in the higher echelons of the Ming dynasty, for he had shoes. A very rare thing in ancient China, which is not often repeated. Yes, the appearance of the Emperor's Dong Chaka was a very common thing in the Ming Dynasty and was a tradition carried over until the second Emperor in the Ming Dynasty, who had a different inspector. That fellow over there. Come, let me tell you about the Ming Dynasty's firmness checker. The first emperor of the Ming dynasty, Emperor Ming, was unfortunately killed by a faction of eunuchs who got rather fed up with his problem of long elongation. I mean, if the emperor was killing people with very long dongs, how would he act towards those with no dongs? It was a very confusing situation, and his brother, Emperor Monging, took over. Now, Emperor Monging had a different philosophy on the way that the standard Chinese emperor should work, ordained from heaven. Instead of focusing so heavily on the men of the realm, he focused on the ladies of the realm, if you will. And the most hated Dong Checker was eradicated from Chinese society, being replaced by this fellow, known as the Firmness 
checker. Now, the ladies of China were quite exhibit, and they still are, and the Emperor had many harems of which he did horrific things for. If you don't know what one of those is, look it up on Wikipedia, but uh, don't ask your mum and dad. And this gentleman was employed to go to all the villages in China, find all of the ladies between the ages of 18 and 24, and check them using this magnificent tool that he holds here. Now, what exactly was he checking for? Well, he did not carry a replication of Emperor's Monging Dong around, as the uh, Dong checker did, as it was found to be disrespectful. Instead, he carried a tool of a similar girth and construction to the Emperor's Dong. He would take all the young ladies, plane them up on the floor, and using his tool, he would perform something that they referred to in ancient China as junk boating. Yes, junk boating. It has been developed in modern days to involve the word motor, but I couldn't mention that in such a museum tour. And any ladies' uh, firmness tools that were able to survive this junk boating from the tool here would be taken away to join one of the emperor's harems over there or over there. He had them pretty much everywhere. Of course, this made the official firmness tester far more despised than the dong tester ever could because a father is annoyed if his son is killed because his dong is too long. But if his daughter is taken away, well... I mean, that's a contrary to China when you think about it because I didn't think much of girls at the time period. But this is what I'm telling you and I have a PhD in Wikipedia history so you just have to believe everything I say. Therefore, the official firmness checker tended to wear a much heavier set of armor. But it was a dangerous job. It's known that at least 30 of these firmness checkers were killed, maimed, or forced to have lots and lots of sex. And it just didn't work out for them in the end. Eventually, Emperor Monging was overthrown by a bunch of angry farmers, cross that their daughters had been taken away to Emperor Monging, who, to be fair, was a little bit mean. But, of course, we must now move on to the third emperor in the Ming dynasty. Three over the course of 150 years, one every 50 years. Well, the next one was far more successful than his contemporaries, and we can find a statue replication of him over there. I'll see you later. You don't need to check my firmness or my dong. I'm a chicken. And so, as I mentioned, we come to our last object on today's tour. Now, this is different to the other objects that we have looked at today, as this is more of a stone depiction rather than a statue. And that's because Emperor Minge, who is depicted here, was a little bit different to Emperor Ming and Emperor Monging. You see, after Emperor Monging was killed by angry farmers, the angry farmers basically took a seal, a horse, a knife, some paint, and a tree, stitched it all together, and declared the creature abomination they had created, Emperor Minge, who you can see here. Now, Emperor Minge was a combination, as I've mentioned, of many different things, and was able to rule over the Kingdom of China for 120 years quite successfully until he was killed by angry farmers for bringing them bad luck. Also, the realization from the eunuchs that they were under the command of an abomination worse than myself. And let's be fair, that is definitely saying something. Now, Emperor Minge's reign came to an end around the 1750s, which led to the downfall of the Ming dynasty in general, moving on to the Ming dynasty, an actual dynasty that exists in China. We don't know much about the rule of Emperor Minge itself, for he did never have any kind of records made. His any kind of sources aren't included, for he was surrounded by horses and seals and generally animals that could not communicate with humans. Therefore, there are no first-hand accounts available to us to study in relation to this unknown emperor, which is a real shame because all we can do from this point is speculate about what 
he did in his spare time. However, we can confirm that Emperor Minj increased the size of the army. He also increased the size of you know, grants given to farmers. Land invaded Turkey, which didn't exist at the time, but somehow he foresaw its existence, invaded Turkey, and beat back the Mongolian invasion by simply standing there and going, a story mentioned in Sun Xing's book about things which aren't important because it's a Wikipedia and not a book review. But yes, Emperor Minge, the last of the Ming dynasty and possibly the most successful, probably because he didn't have some kind of weird sexual guy checking on people living in ancient China. Very, very interesting. I'm sure you agree. <laughs> He looks a bit like my grandma, don't you know? And so we reach the end of today's tour of the museum. But I thank you greatly for joining us in another successful tour of this wonderful museum related artifacts. I do hope that you will join us again in the future so that we can explore more of the wonderful exhibits that exist in this museum. I have been Professor Cluckington and you have been watching me talk fantastic, amazing historical facts with a pigeon in the background. Please have a glorious day and I'll see you next time. Tootly pips and pippily darn toots. <laughs> now, where did I leave my pornography? <laughs> <laughs>